Hello everyone. Welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Hope you guys are fine. So come on guys, join the session fast. Let's be quick. Let's be quick, faster, faster. So that we can start the session soon. Come on guys, be faster. So that we'll be starting the session soon. Let's be quick. Uh, today we'll be dealing with 20 questions which will include hydrology, environment, irrigation, everything. All the combination of all the three. So let's be quick so that uh, in, uh, we'll keep it a target of 45 minutes and we'll do that. Okay. So we'll be starting the session faster. Namaste Vibhu. Himesh, good evening, good evening, beta everybody, good evening. Okay, so <clears throat> before we move, let me tell you a few things. You can go to my profile. And uh, guys, if you're preparing for ESE, so there's a workshop that uh, will be taken by Webha Barsaya, who is a rank holder for ESE 2022, All India Ranking 9. So this session is free of cost. It will be in the app on 12th March at 12.30 p.m. So you guys can attend that. Okay, uh, next coming further, you can join my telegram group for further coming classes, schedules, everything. And lastly, if you want a gate preparation ebook, link is in the description. You guys can download that. Okay, now everybody ready? Ready guys? So that we can start the session fast. Come on, come on. Be fast. Ready, ready? Faster, faster, faster. So that we can start the session. Okay, so let's be quick. Uh, we'll take a target of 45 minutes uh, so that we can complete it at max. Uh, let's try. Okay, this is the first question. This question is regarding your environmental engineering. First environmental engineering, then hydrology and then irrigation. So 20 questions mixture will be there. And these questions will help you in your revision. And these are according to your BAC level questions. Okay, so guys, come on, start this question. A rectangular settling tank is used to treat 3.6 MLD of raw water. That is 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 liters per day of raw water. The sedimentation period or you can call it the detention period is given to you as 3 hours. Velocity of flow is given to you. It is asking you the cross-sectional area of the basin. So it is asking you cross-sectional area of the basin. How will you calculate guys? Cross-sectional area of the basin, how will you calculate? Cross-sectional area. How will you calculate? Cross-sectional area means what? Firstly, you should know there are two things. One is plan area, which is L into B or B into L. Cross-sectional area, which is B into H. Right now, it is asking us cross-sectional area. So, how will you calculate it? How will you calculate it? Tell me fast. How will you calculate this? If I do, I will tell you a simple method and I will tell you a tricky one. If I know the discharge, can I calculate the volume? Yes, of course. 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 liters per day into 3 hours. One day this will convert it into hours, 24 hours. And liters, we can convert it into meter cube by multiplying by 10 raised to power minus 3 and convert it into meter cube. How much it will be coming? How much it will be coming? It will be coming 450 meter cube. But with the help of volume, how will I get? Can I calculate if I know the volume, how will it help us? Come on guys. I calculated the volume but it is of any use, yes or no? Is it of any use, volume? I don't think. But see, velocity of flow is given to me. Detention time is given to me. Can I calculate length, velocity of flow into detention time? Velocity is 10 centimeter per minute and detention time is 3 hours. 1 hour is equal to, <coughs> excuse me, 60 minutes. So, uh, we'll convert it into meters. That will be better. So, 10 into 3 into 60. 
So this will weigh 1800. So we'll convert it into meters. It will be 18 meters. This will be the length. I got the discharge. With the help of discharge, I calculated volume, which I don't think is of any use. We got the length. How we will get cross-sectional area, guys? How we will get cross-sectional area? Come on, anybody. How will we get cross-sectional area? You remember all this thing? You should know one thing. What is that? With the help of discharge by this velocity over flow rate, we get plan area. With the help of Q by Vf, we will be getting cross-sectional area. Yes? Yes? 25, 24. Volume is equal to area into length. What about this? Is it correct? 3.6 into 10 raised to power 3. Tell me. I am doing n number of ways. You have to tell me which one is correct. Velocity of flow is 10 centimeter per minute. Is it correct? Which one is the one which you have to do? Which you said that is correct. Very good. Very good hydrology. I calculated volume. I know volume is equal to L into B into H. So volume which I calculated 450 divided by 18 will give me cross-sectional area. That is correct. 450 divided by 18 that is 25 meters square. Absolutely correct. But what about this logic? What about this logic velocity perpendicular to that area we take? So this also can be done provided you have to take care of the units and durations. So both the method is correct. Round off to the nearest integer it has already been rounded. Come on this one. This you have to tell me answer in a single line. In a single line. 1 meter cube is equal to 10 raised to power minus 3 liter. But here it is given in cent cubic centimeter or you can say centimeter cube. So firstly you should know the relationship between centimeter cube and liter. Come on guys. Tell me the relation between centimeter cube and liters. I am writing it. You tell me whether it is correct or not. Is it correct? <coughs> is it correct? 1 centimeter cube is equal to 10 raised to power minus 3 liters. Now, a 180 cc of water sample whose initial mass it is placed in a crucible and weight of crucible is given to you as 98.636. Now, that is dried at 103 degrees Celsius and final mass after drying, it came out after 104 degrees Celsius, it came out to be 98.697 grams. Now, this is kept in multiple furnace for 700 degrees Celsius. And after that, the mass of the sample in the crucible will be 98.654 grams. Tell us the volatile solids. So, when it is talking about volatile solids, let me tell you, uh, the muffled furnace, after the muffled furnace, you will see that the volatile solids will evaporate, will vaporize. The things which will be left will be fixed solids and the crucible. So, volatile solids will be how much? Guys, I was expecting the answer. 33.0, no, no. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Wrong, Salgar. See, final mass is 98.697. After the oven dried one. And after muffle furnace, it is 98.654 grams. So, what you will be doing? This includes weight of crucible. This includes weight of crucible. So, 98.697 minus 98.654 grams and for 180 cc so converting it into liters thousand and converting gram into milligram so you can convert it and 10 raised to power 3 how much it is coming just check it out once i'll also check it out everything is in gram no 98.697 654 238.88. Yes, now it is correct. Initially, you said 238.66. 238.88. So, you can take it at 890. Clear? So, see, this was given to you. This is not at all required. If you want to subtract it, you are just wasting your time. Here also, crucible weight is included. Here also, it is included. So, by default, it is subtracted. So, don't waste your time there. Correct. Correct. Uh, Vibha, Gaurav, correct. Come on. This one. 
is slash r. It is MCQ by the way. Five days BOD is given to you. You have to calculate seven days BOD temperature changes given to you. Come on guys, this is a very simple question and let me tell you, generally every year it has been seen that questions related to BOD is asked somewhere or the other. So that's why you have to be very much cautious. So five days BOD at 20 degrees Celsius is given to you. This is base 10. Actually, I have the habit of base E, so I have to be extra cautious. Five days, it is 200 mg per liter. Ultimate BOD, you have to calculate 1 minus 10 raised to power minus 0.1 into 5. How much it is coming? Salgar, everybody else, how much it is coming? And now I'm asking the value of BOD ultimate. How come it is correct? See, in a rush, I guess you are not seeing it is 229 and we will be getting 292. Is it? I'll check it out once again. If you guys are saying you are guys, let me check it out. 1 minus. Just do 10, huh? not E. <coughs> 292.49 it is coming. So, how, and in here it is 229. So, so see, it's algor. Okay, it's good. If you want to do mistake, commit it here, not in the examination. So, this is wrong. Then, 5 days BOD at 37 degrees Celsius, 7 days BOD at 20 degrees Celsius. So, let's first calculate 7 days BOD at 20 degrees Celsius. So, BOD ultimate 1 minus 10 raised to power minus k in this time 7. Ultimate is 292.5, 1 minus 10 raised to power, uh, this is 0.1 into 7. How much it is coming? How much it, this is coming? Tell me this. 234.14. Again, 243. So, they have changed, interchanged the digits. So, this is also wrong. Okay, now you have to calculate 5 day BOD at 36 degrees Celsius. Guys, don't make mistakes in these sort of questions huh? because there will be just interchanging in the digits. 5 days BOD at 37 degrees Celsius. So, first you have to calculate the deoxygenation rate constant at 37 degrees Celsius. So, how much it will be? 0 0.1, 1.047, 37 minus 20. 17. How much it will come? 0.218 per day. Yes. Guys, you can check it. Check the calculation once. Huh? 5 days, 37 degrees Celsius. So, BOD ultimate 1 minus 10 raised to power minus kg T. So, ultimate BOD is 292.50. It will remain same irrespective of the temperature for a particular water sample minus 0.218 into 5. How much it is coming? 0.22, huh, 0.218 rounded it off. Correct. How much it, this is coming? <clears throat> How much this is coming? 269, somebody saying 268, 268.7. So, C is the correct. Okay? Fine. Next question. Here you have to choose the incorrect option. I am not going to tell you. Tell me. Choose the incorrect one. Figure is given to you. You have to choose the incorrect one. Oh, you took 0 0.22. Fine, fine. Round about it is correct. Fine. What is the answer for this one? Figure is given to you. You have to choose the incorrect option. Faster. R by R is equal to Some people are saying C, some people are saying D. What is the one which is correct? Come on, faster, faster. 
you know this one small p by capital p is equal to alpha by 360 small p is equal to a kept here capital p is 2 pi r perimeter or you can write it as pi d alpha by 360 here pi is missing so this is the incorrect one what about this hydraulic radius one what what about the hydraulic radius one hydraulic radius one is correct or not guys come on interact pass hydraulic radius is correct or not correct or not then come on this also i am not going to answer this is very simple i want the answer come on guys we have a target of 45 minutes 15 minutes has passed and we are on the fifth question let's be quick <clears throat> calcium and magnesium as bicarbonate are responsible for carbonate hardness yes or no bicarbonates and of calcium and magnesium and to be precise bicarbonates and carbonates of multivalent cation carbonate hardness or you call it as temporary hardness okay so first statement is correct the no carbonate hardness is measured by total hardness and bicarbonate hardness no carbonate hardness is minimum of total hardness and alkalinity okay next the non carbonate hardness is measured by the difference between total hardness and bicarbonate hardness yes non carbonate hardness is measured by the difference between total hardness and bicarbonate hardness i generally should not be bicarbonates technically it is actually carbonates and bicarbonates of multivalent cations so it should be actually carbonate for making it more clear so if it is carbonate then it is correct then uh, you have what the carbonate and bicarbonate of sodium are described as negative carbonate hardness Uh, not exactly you call it uh, basically uh, sodium if it is there you call it as pseudo hardness okay negative carbonate hardness is not such a thing generally we call it as pseudo hardness because the ones which does not impart hardness they impart pseudo hardness technically so the more precise one if you talk about only one is the correct one and third one is somehow correct Fourth is technically uh, because of the options. If you go, we'll mark it fourth. But I'm telling you, generally it is pseudo hardness. Okay, come on. This you know. Mm hmm. Just a minute. Which of these are classified as nuisance bacteria? Just a minute. Here yeah, nuisance is given, but options is given is different. Just a one. Come on, let's make this as M M S Q. Pseudo like negative hardness. Uh, yeah, you can say that, Salgar. Actually, you know what? There's nothing like negative hardness, but they have imparted those who does not impart hardness, they impart negative hardness. So they have made it pseudo word. Like you have negative alkalinity. Those who does not impart alkalinity, they impart negative alkalinity. So we write minus H plus hands. Which is the one? It is correct. Nuisance bacteria is sulfur bacteria and iron bacteria. you know that okay you guys know this come on coming to this one again we have this question this all see whenever this consider the statement is there you are going to do it because i think now you have done so much studies regarding it you have to tell me regarding the options iron bacteria cause tuberculosis uh, localized corrosions and all takes place yes that's true when you talk about sulfur bacteria uh, whenever if you are using uh, that water for curing and all uh, for the buildings and all so if the, in that water sulfur bacteria is present then obviously it will be destructive to concrete and other structures okay cholera and jaundice are due to protozoa no for amoebic dysentery we have protozoa cholera is for what bacteria so one and two that is option a come on this i guess you should know 
one side the names of given of the microorganisms and other side their shape is given so i guess you should know faster cocus the spiralum by the name only you can see it is spirala shape the brio it's like this i have drawn it now i guess you should tell me cocus is basically what it is spherical you can say somewhat bacillus is a rod shaped spiralum it's spiral shaped vibrium is cocus shaped so it is 3 2 4 1 yes. correct okay now coming to this question now coming to <coughs> hydrology okay now the following is a set of successive 15 minutes period is given to you now in this question it is asking you to calculate phi index is given to you and it is asking you to calculate w index in maximum cases we know that phi index we have to calculate and with the help of that we calculate w index we calculate and with the help of that we calculate phi index but in this question phi index is given to you how will you calculate guys firstly you know that w index is average infiltration rate over the entire storm period so p minus r by t so let's calculate the total precipitation so tell me 2 plus 2 plus 8 and 12 12 plus 7 will make 19 19 plus 1.25 plus 1.25 how much it will come 21.5 tell me the total value 21.5 guys this is in centimeter per hour and the duration is 15 minutes each so convert 15 by 60 hours how much it will be coming you are telling me the final answer what you are telling me 5.375 cm this is the precipitation which i am getting 5.375 what about runoff for calculating runoff phi index is given to you so we know that if 3 cm of infiltration is there and 2 cm of rainfall is there obviously it will infiltrate it will not contribute to runoff so the ones which will be contributing is 8 cm per hour and 7 cm per hour so runoff will be 8 minus 3 cm per hour but the rainfall we are talking about is 15 minutes then 7 minus 3 into 15 by 6 how much it is coming how much it is coming just check the calculations 2.25 cm so this is 2.25 cm and we will be taking the entire duration so this will be 90 converting minutes into <coughs> hour how much 2. Point, how much it is coming obviously w index at max can be 3 or eventually it will be lesser than that how much it is coming is it 2.08 correct hydrology hydrology has given the correct answer for hydro okay fine this one the probability of occurrence of a flood equal to or greater than 20 years flood exactly once during next 20 years so they have confused you with this 20 20 20 every time equal to or exactly once so actually recurrence intervals is also 20 years so the probability of occurrence is 1 by t that is 1 by 20 this will make how much 0.05 and non occurrence is 1 minus 0.05 that is 0.95 exactly once so 20 c1 p to the power 1 q to the power 19 so 20 c1 probability of occurrence is 0.05 and non occurrence is 0.95 come on guys 0.642 mm, just check the calculation once again it is coming point same same i'll also check it out i don't have the answer for this one 20 c1 into 0.05.95 to the power 19. Point three seven seven it is coming. 
0.377 it is coming guys exactly once 0.37735 check it out how come two students got the answer and that two same and that two wrong just check it out 0.377 salga you are making too much mistakes in calculations beta take it seriously yeah come on this one again the answer from you guys answer from you guys it is asking incorrect incorrect statement not the correct actually i also have the habit of marking correct 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 but whenever the statement wise question comes have a look whether it is talking about correct or incorrect fastly incorrect fast incorrect it is asking guys nobody only hydrology told okay direct runoff is a part of surface runoff no surface runoff is a part of direct runoff let me tell you direct runoff is surface runoff plus prompt interflow so direct runoff is not a part of surface runoff surface runoff is a part of direct runoff so this is wrong statement the delayed flow that reaches is called prompt interflow no it is delayed flows is known as base flow by by the name prompt you should understand it happens quickly so this one this is also incorrect runoff is classified into two categories direct runoff and base flow yes you also classify it as surface runoff and subsurface runoff you also classify it as direct runoff and base flow come on <clears throat> here phillips equation is given don't worry if you don't know about it just by your basic common sense you will be able to do it so infiltration by phillips equation is given to you you have to calculate the runoff come on guys you will be able to do it you it has asked you to calculate runoff runoff is what total precipitation total precipitation is how much 6.5 cm per hour and it is happening for 4 hours so this will make how much 6.5 into 4 26 cm is the precipitation just calculate infiltration for 4 hours and subtract so infiltration for 4 hours half s t minus half plus k dt so half it is 6.4574 t to the power minus half integrate it plus this will be 1.23 and here there will be a t 0.2 so half 6. Point, check it out whether i am doing it correct or not here we'll integrate it na half And half will come up, so two will come up, and one point two three into four. Come on, guys, calculate fast and let me know. <coughs> This two and two will get cancelled out. Six point four five seven four t to the power half or four to the power half plus one point two three into four. How much I am getting? <coughs> How much I am getting, guys? Fastly. anybody calculated this is it 17.8348 correct hydrology so runoff will become how much 26 minus 17.8348 just take it 8.35 somewhere like that how much it will come how much it will come 8.16 around centimeter so guys If you don't know any equations and all, you are like I haven't studied Phillips equation. I only studied Horton's equation and all. Don't worry, you will be able to solve it. Okay, just go through the basic logic. Come on. A field. Uh, now we'll be talking about irrigation. A field was supplied water 
and irrigation tank at the rate is was water and irrigation tank at a rate is given to you 120 liters per second area which is to be irrigated is 2.5 duration is given to you you have to calculate application efficiency come on guys let's be fast it's already 6:30 we have seven questions left what is water application efficiency water stored in the root zone of crops to that of the water delivered in the field into 100 so how much water is stored in the root zone first we'll calculate how much water is delivered in the field so 120 liters per second with this water is delivered so how will you calculate guys how much 120 liters is there but this is not delivered this was taken from the main canal if you see it it was found that the actual delivery at the field which is about 4 kilometers from the tank was 100 liters so it was supposed to be 120 but which was delivered was 100 100 liters per second what is the hour uh, it is for 8 hours it was being there duration 8 hours 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes 1 minutes is equal to 60 seconds how much you will be getting from here convert liters into meter cube how much you will be getting from here 2880 meter cube so this is the water which is delivered into the field but that water is not stored in the root zone of the crop why because there are certain losses right runoff loss which is taking place so how much water is stored in the root zone minus 800 into 100 how much it will be coming 72.22 Correct, sir. Very good. Okay, so this is the question. Don't take one twenty liters and solve it. It will be wrong. Okay, correct. Now, this question. You have to calculate the exit gradient at the downstream end. So here, I guess, if you know the formula, you will be able to solve it. G is equal to h by d into one pi root lambda. So. <coughs> I'll do it here. Alpha square by two. Alpha is equal to b by d. So b is forty. D is four point five. So this will be making how much? Forty divided by four point five. This will make around eight point eight eight. So we'll take it as eight point eight nine. So one plus one plus eight point eight nine square by two. How much we are getting? Calculate the value of lambda, guys. Calculate it once. I guess four point nine seven. Check it out. So H will be three point two, D will be four point five, lambda will be four point nine seven. Point one two five. Four point nine seven. Correct. So exit gradient will be somewhere around point one zero one. Yes. I'm not your student, but this slide background is so satisfying. Please carry on and all the best. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, now next question. Next question, this one. Now in this question, one thing is given to you. You don't. Uh, if uh, this comes in MCQ and data insufficient is written, I bet maximum students have marked data insufficient. But this question is not data insufficient. So guys, see this question. An unlined canal is there. Silt factor is given to you as one. Width of flow is given to you as seventy one point two five. It is asking you the average depth. How will you calculate? It is asking you average depth. So how will you calculate? You will say discharge is equal to area into velocity. So area is b y into v. So with this, I'll get the depth. But for that, you need velocity, of course. And the formula for velocity is q f square upon one forty to the power one by six. But you don't know discharge. How will you calculate discharge? Anybody can tell me how we'll calculate discharge. If you see, for calculating discharge, there's one thing which is mentioned to you. Assuming the unlined canal as a wide canal, so we will take perimeter will be approximately B only. So perimeter will come out to be how much? Seventy one point two five only. 
and you know p is equal to 4.75 root q so now you will get otherwise it will not be possible for you to calculate the discharge correct hai so you won't be able to calculate the discharge so that's the reason it is written as y channel you are assuming how much you will get the discharge how much will be getting the discharge tell me the value of discharge 71.25 divide by 4.75 and take the uh, square of it correct substitute here and calculate the velocity discharge you already got width you already know depth you have to calculate velocity will be telling you how much you will be getting the velocity faster faster correct so you got the depth of course okay simple 36 minutes 15 questions not bad five questions more to go the next question come on this you can answer me these uh, constructed for protection against flood so you have seen and then check flooding and all you have cross leaves and all those things what does it do come on guys <clears throat> results in come on faster faster salkar hydrology everybody else Which of the statements is are correct? It increases flow velocity. That's correct. Next, it increases velocity. So obviously, it will increase discharge also. Okay. So one and three. Okay, it can be wrong also, so you have to challenge me. I'm uh, see once I have to deal with something and I have to make it an ambiguity so you guys can tell. Okay, this one consumptive use. Calculate the value of consumptive use. Electrical conductivity of a saturated soil is given to you. Leaching requirement depth is given to you. You have to calculate the value of consumptive use. How will you calculate? How will you calculate, guys? Faster, faster. Is it correct? Leaching requirement, electrical conductivity, radiated water grade. How will you do it? Leaching requirement is given to me seven point five hundred ECI. How will you calculate that? You have to calculate drained. You will take it as two into thirty. How much is ECI coming? Faster, faster. One point nine five micro move per centimeter. So now, what you need to do, guys? How will you calculate? It is asking you the value of consumptive use. How will you calculate? i'm asking you that i don't know you tell me tell me this is correct this is correct salgar navin hydrology this is correct faster faster This comes out to be five point four nine four five mm. This is correct. Yes or no? Faster. It was asking consumptive use. Why did I do this? Okay. This one. 
This I am assuming everybody will know. Ripples do not form. Ripples, when does it not form? What is the size of the particle? This is asked in many of your state level exams also. Tell me faster. Ripples do not form when? Come on guys, faster. If the size of the bed particle is coarser than? Come on guys, faster, faster. It's coarser than? 0 0.0 to 0 0.2, 0.3, 0.6. Coarser than, come on guys, 0.6. Nobody answered it. Okay, this time I'm assuming everybody will answer it. <coughs> this will be silting, not sitting, silting. Come on, this, this you are going to answer. Come on, faster. <coughs> See, we did with numericals questions, we have also included conceptual questions. This will be silting. Both correct. Very good. If we go by sediment transport mechanism and all, scouring that is erosion and slitting that is deposition will take place and because of this sharp and irregular curves will also be created. So both are the correct ones. Okay. Last question. You have to calculate the uplift pressure at drainage gallery. Last question. Come on guys. <coughs> uplift pressure. Firstly, check it out fast. Yes or no? Yes, 2 to 7.10 approximately. You have taken 10 or what? 1 person other also confirm. Okay, let me check it out then. 9.81 into 5 plus. two to 8.9 only it is coming. Hmm. Salgar said correct. Uh, hydrology and all you have taken 10 or what because when I am taking 9.81 I am getting 228.9 only so you guys might have rounded it off or tweaked 9.8 something like that just check it out okay so guys these were the questions 20 questions including environment hydrology and irrigation if you have any further doubts you can uh, message me on my telegram group but please tag me while you message that's also important otherwise it will go up and i won't be able to know so that is something which you should do and in case of any doubts let me know for sure okay so that's it guys and uh, this sandika fanda is for you guys uh, regarding test of cement i basically went first time uh, for this uh, construction site Generally, we used to do it in lab and all because we studied. But this time, practically, I did and I found something uh, different, which you have to see it on Sunday Kafanda this Sunday. And scholarship test, it is free of cost, guys. Link is in the description. You can register now. Okay, so that's all. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Good night and study hard. Thank <laughs> you.